أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful, the one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon his pure and beloved messenger, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. And may God's peace and blessings be upon the pure household of the Ahlul Bayt, especially the leader of our time, the awaited Savior, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajah. May Allah hasten His reappearance and make us all amongst His sincere and dedicated servants. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي صدق الله العلي العظيم Illuminate your hearts and minds with a very loud salawat اللهم صلي على محمد In this short life that we have, there are many joys. But I tell you that no joy can compete with the joy of having a good friend, the joy of friendship. Friends serve to enrich our lives. They have the capacity to change our mood to the good. Friends help us cope with stress with depression. They give us a sense of belonging. They give us vision. They help us find our mission. Friends play a very important role in our lives. They, they help us achieve our goals. Our lives without friends are incomplete. One narration tells us that without a good friend, you feel as if, you've, if you're missing something from your life. As if your life is truly incomplete. There is an important part that is missing. In many of our societies today, you'll find there are people who actually don't have any friends to turn to. Don't have true friends in society. For example, in the UK, there are 5 million adults who say they don't have a friend to turn to. You can imagine the loneliness that the lack of friends brings into our lives. You can imagine the depression and the stress that these people go through. Not having a friend to turn to in times of hardship, in times of sadness, in times of depression. One of the greatest gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us human beings is the gift of friendship, to have good friends in our lives. Without friends, we're incomplete. We're not complete human beings. Now at the same time, one of the greatest dangers in our lives is a bad friend. How many people in history have gone astray have ruined their lives, have failed because of bad friends. This is why in one hadith, the Imam salam says, السوء, The worst type of loneliness is which type of loneliness? Is it solitary confinement? No, that's not the worst type of loneliness. The worst type of loneliness according to this narration is to have a bad friend. Because a bad friend will eventually make you feel lonely because they create an emptiness in your life. After all those years, when you look back, you look at your mistakes and how your bad friend misguided you, ruined your life, caused you to fail, a feeling of loneliness and emptiness will envelop your heart. 
And this will make you even more depressed. One of the greatest dangers that surround us are bad friends who misguide us. During the time of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, there was a famous poet who was one of the authors of the Mu'allaqat, one of the famous poems which were actually hung on the Kaaba. His name was Al-A'sha. Now this man, he came from Najd, you know, modern day in Riyadh, this area. He heard about the message of the religion of Islam. Now Al-A'sha, he was infatuated with alcohol. You know how people these days, they're obsessed with coffee. You can't go about your day without coffee. There were people in pre-Islamic Arabia, their coffee was alcohol. They could not survive without it. They were addicted to it. They were obsessed with it. Al-A'sha was one of those people who was obsessed with alcohol. So he heard about the message of the Prophet when once he was passing by Mecca. He figured to himself, you know what? This sounds like a good message. Why shouldn't I go meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and become a Muslim? Now as he wanted to go and meet the Prophet to declare his Islam to become a Muslim, one of his evil friends told him, wait a minute, where do you think you're going? He told him, I'm going to meet Muhammad. I heard he has a good message and I want to declare my Islam. I want to become a Muslim. He told him, but Islam is a very difficult religion. It's not going to suit you. It's not good for you. He said, what do you mean? Why? He told him, Muhammad outlaws adultery. If you become a Muslim, it will become haram for you to commit adultery. He said, so that's not really a big deal. What he is advocating for is good. The fact that he's outlawing it is actually good. No, I'm going to go and become Muslim. He told him, but Muhammad outlaws alcohol. In his religion, alcohol is banned. Al-A'sha, when he heard that alcohol is banned, and to him, alcohol was like your daily coffee. He's like, you know what? This one's difficult. I don't think <clears throat> I have the determination to go and become a Muslim now. Let me go back to my village and drink as much as alcohol as I can till the following year, till the next year. And then the next year, I will come, leave the alcohol and become a Muslim. What happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him one more year. He died as a mushrik, as a kafir, and he was addicted to alcohol. See what his friend did to him. Subhanallah, he had made the intention to go and declare his Islam and become a Muslim, but his friend barred him and he caused him eternal damnation. Yalla, let his friend now save him on the day of judgment, can he? This is why the Quran says in Surah Al-Furqan, وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ On the day of judgment, the oppressors, the unjust ones, the sinful ones, they shall bite at their hands because of their regret. What will they say? يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا I wish I would have heeded to the message of the Prophet. Then what does he say? يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أَتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا I wish I would not have taken so-and-so person as a friend. لَقَدْ أَظَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي I heard the truth. I saw it with my own eyes. But he barred me from it. He misguided me. On the day of judgment, one of our greatest regrets is if we kept away from the path of guidance because of a bad friend. Because of a friend who has a negative influence on us. Therefore, just as one of the greatest gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed us with is the gift of friendship, it enriches our lives. At the same time, one of the greatest dangers in our lives is a bad friend who negatively impacts us, who's always giving us negative advice, who's always affecting our actions in a negative way. 
Therefore, the topic of friendship is one of the most important topics within the religion of Islam. Let us examine this topic by addressing these four points. The first point, what are some qualities of good friends that I, that I should seek? Number one. Number two, what qualities should I have as a friend? Because friendship is a mutual relationship. Oftentimes, we examine the qualities of others. My friend, he should have this quality, that quality, this quality, that quality. What about you? We forget about our own selves. What qualities should I have to sustain a good friendship? Number two. Number three, how can you test your friend that he or she has these qualities? Because oftentimes, you know, we become friends with someone and then after 10 years we discover what type of a person this was. You don't want it to be too late because then that is dangerous for you. How can you test? Are there ways for you to test whether this person is a good friend or not in a quick way? And number four, how and where can we find good friends? We talk about good friends, the importance of friendship, the dangers of a bad friendship. Where do you find those good friends? How do you go about finding a good friend in society? Let's begin by analyzing the first point. What are some qualities of good friends? The qualities of our friends are extremely important because we as human beings, we're like sponges. Believe it or not, we're like a sponge. We absorb the behavior and the attitude and the habits of those who are around us. We absorb it very quickly. If my friends have good behaviors, they have, good, they have a good attitude, if they have good habits, then I will also tend to pick up on those good habits. But if they have negative habits, bad habits, evil ways, this will be transferred to me. I will absorb them. So the qualities of who you surround yourself with are extremely important. They determine what kind of a person you will be. That's why in the hadith, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what does he say? You want to know what type of, you know, religiosity you have, how religious you are? Look at the religiosity of your friends. If they're religious, that means pretty much you're religious. If they're not, that says a lot about you. That's why if you want to know a person in society, what kind of a person is he? Look at his friends. Whom this person associates with tells you a lot about the personality and the qualities and the characters of this person. This is extremely important. Now there's one problem in our society and that's the problem of peer pressure. It is virtually impossible to protect yourself from peer pressure. Now if you surround yourself with good friends, then what will happen is you will allow yourself to be pressured, yes, but to do the good things. Have friends who will pressure you to do the good things. So it's important that you choose friends with the good qualities because friends will pressure you whether you realize it or not, whether you like it or not. So have them at least pressure you to do something good. Let's briefly discuss five important qualities of good friends. The first quality, when you befriend someone, you need to make sure that your friend does not have a double face. Because oftentimes what we see in society, there are people who have two personalities. When you're with your friend, your friend acts in a certain way. He thinks in a certain way. His entire perspective on life is in a certain way. But then when you go amongst the people, your friend he, he, he transforms into an actor. Not the same friend that I was sitting with last night. He has a double personality. The way he speaks is now different. He puts an act. He hides his true self. If you find one of your friends in this state, realize that this is a red flag. You don't want to befriend someone who has two personalities, who has a double face who has a double way of 
dealing with people, of showing himself. You want someone who's honest with you, with others, with strangers, with family members, with everyone in society. Is the same, is consistent, has one personality. Because if your friend has two personalities, yes, maybe today he's showing you the first personality, but then tomorrow he can betray you, he can deceive you, and you'll be dealing with a second personality. And you're like, wait a minute, that's not what I subscribe to. This is not my friend. What happened? When we choose friends, brothers and sisters, this is a very important quality. Make sure they have a consistent personality. If you catch your friend changing, shifting personalities, that's a bad sign. That's a red flag that tells you, be careful of this friend. This may not be such a good friend to you. So this is one very important quality, brothers and sisters, that we need to keep in mind. And it's a very important quality because many of us, after years, realize how many people have I seen, brothers and sisters, who will come and say, Sayyid, I did not know. After 10 years, I discovered. I discovered that my friend has a different personality, has another face. No, Habibi, it's not that after 10 years, your friend suddenly developed a new personality no all along you were blind you were not seeing that other personality because you considered him your friend it's okay when he's with me he's different when he's with the other people he's different that's normal but this should actually raise a flag so this is the first quality the second quality that you want to look for in a friend or be careful from a friend is make sure your friend does not take advantage of you. We in Islam help our friends. You help as much as you can. And when your friend, whenever, even if your friend knocks at your door at 2 a.m., help him if he's asking for help directly. But the minute you discover and realize that your friend is trying to use you, is trying to take advantage of you, you need to put an end to this type of friendship. And Imam Sadiq in one hadith says, akhak, Serve your friend, your brother, as much as you can. Don't hesitate. Even if your friend keeps asking you and asking you for help, keep, you know, even if he insists, keep helping. Never say no. وَلَكِنْ إِنْ اسْتَخْدَمَكَ فَلَا وَلَا كَرَامَ but if your tra if friend tries to take advantage of you, tries to use you, say no. Because friendship is a two-way street. It's a mutual relationship. If in a friendship you're the only one who's giving, 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 and your friend is only receiving from you, this is a problem. This shows that this is not really a true friend. A true friend who has a mutual relationship with you. You give and he gives. You take and he takes. If you discover that your friend is trying to take advantage of you, realize this is not a true friend. You can't depend on this friend. This friend will certainly betray you. Now in the religion of Islam, some argue, wait a minute. We encourage all to be good even with your enemies. So what? You continue doing your good even if your friend doesn't pay you back. Even if your friend is taking advantage of you, it's, is exploiting you, is using you. As believers, aren't we required to do good? Even with our own enemies be good? Weren't the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, good even with some of their enemies? Yes, be good with your enemies. There's no doubt about that. And if you have a friend who, you know, is only wants from you, wants to exploit you, be good to that friend. No one is saying be negative or be harsh with that friend. Be good with this friend, but don't take him as a true friend. A friend whom you depend on. A friend whom you share your secrets with. Be good with that person, but don't take him as a reliable friend. Because the fact that he's using you, taking advantage of you, demonstrates he's not a true friend. You cannot fully trust this person. This person is not loyal to you. So don't take him as a true friend, even though you still should do good to him. So this is the second quality. 
The third quality of good friends, one hadith states, their presence reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their tongue, meaning their speech, increases your knowledge and their actions remind you of the day of judgment. Good friends are those friends whom when you associate with brothers and sisters, you are reminded of Allah, you are reminded of what's right, of what's correct, of what you have to do. Not of your desires, what I want, what's fun for me. Because oftentimes when we look for friends, we want friends who will give you a good time, right? You want friends to have fun with, entertainment. I want to be entertained. Now yes, it's good to have a friend whom, you know, who's, who shares the fun with you, who's entertaining, that's good. A friend who's humorous, that's excellent. But that's not the only thing you should be looking for. You should be looking for a friend who reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what you should be looking for. When you're with this friend, after you spend time with this friend, you feel better about yourself. You feel closer to God, closer to your parents, closer to your family members. Because you know, one problem is, I know some friends, when you spend time with them, you begin to hate your parents more. If you ever realize that, this means this is a bad friend. This is not a friend who wants your goodness. A true friend is the one whom after you spend time with, you become more loving towards your parents, toward your family members. This is a true friend. He makes you feel better. He uplifts your spirituality. A good friend is one who's an optimist. Now yes, they're realistic, but at the same time, they give you hopes. There are friends, Allahu Akbar, as soon as something happens, something very minor, they blacken the world in your face. It's as if it's Armageddon, the day of judgment has happened. They're always looking at the negative side. They're pessimists. Stay away from such friends. They do you no good in life. You want friends who always encourage you who always boost your confidence. These are the types of friends that you need. If a sister is looking for another sister as a true friend, find a sister who observes the hijab with confidence and she fears nothing. That's a good friend. Find an excellent mother who has raised good children. She's a good friend. Find a loving wife. She's a good friend. Not someone who's only concerned with this life and the brands and the luxuries. This person will do you no good. So make sure that your friend, brothers and sisters, as the hadith states, their words increase your knowledge. You know, when you spend time with your true friend, you get a new perspective. Every time he gives you a new idea, a new outlook in life. This is a good friend. You're benefiting from constantly. So the words of this friend increases your knowledge. The presence of this friend reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the actions of this friend remind you of the day of judgment. This is the third quality. The fourth quality in one beautiful hadith, Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, he tells us about those whom we should stay away from. Make sure your friends don't have these qualities. He says, إِيَّاكَ وَمُصَادَقَةِ الْكَذَّابِ فَإِنَّهُ كَالسَّرَابِ يُقَرِّبُ لَكَ الْبَعِيدِ وَيُبَعَّدُ لَكَ الْقَرِيبِ Make sure you do not befriend a liar. Because a liar is like the mirage. He distorts the reality. What's close, he makes it appear as if it's far. And what's far, he makes it appear as if it's close. Now this is symbolic. The Imam السلام, is saying that this person will not show you the reality. He will confuse you. Because your friend, if he or she has a habit of lying, he will not lie all the times. So you will not know when he or she is lying. If you catch your friend lying frequently, this is a red flag. Realize that this friend is no good to you. Don't make up excuses. Say, no, it's okay. I mean, we all lie. You know, he did it with a good intention. If your friend has a habit 
of lying, not to you only, to others. Because this is the problem. Sometimes when I'm looking at my friends, I say, okay, my friend is truthful to me, even though he lies to other people. Habibi, if he's lying to others today, tomorrow he's going to lie to you as well. What guarantees you? What protects you from his lies or from her lies? Don't befriend one who is not truthful. Test your friend for truth. How truthful is he? When he conveys you a message, when he gives you news, when you ask him questions, does he give you a straightforward answer? Or he's always trying to lie. This is a good integration to see if this is a good friend or not, whether he's truthful or not. Then the Imam السلام, says, also do not befriend a cheap person. One who's stingy. Why? Because a stingy person will let you down when you need him most. When the times are good, he'll act as if he's good. He's there because he wants to take advantage of you. He wants to benefit from you. But when you fall down, believe me, he will not do anything to lift you. Be with someone who's generous, who has a generous heart and who has generous actions. Don't go with stingy people and befriend them and trust them with your secrets because they'll let you down when you need them most. I remember there was a brother in Florida about seven, eight years ago when I visited that community in the month of Ramadan. He was very well off. He used to work in real estate. He was a young man, maybe about the age of you know, 28, 30 back then. He was very well off. He was successful and his business was growing. Now, because of his position, he had found many friends, many people who saw him as wealthy, a successful businessman. They wanted to be his friends and he had many, many friends in that society. And he was very generous with them. Anyone who is a newcomer to that city, he would help him establish a business. He would give him a loan. He would even buy a house for them. I know that once he bought a house, for someone who was roughly his same age. He was extremely generous. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to test him. Things went bad for him and he pretty much lost all his property. All his business went down. He even became bankrupt. He had nothing. Now when he was in trouble, he thought about his friends. All these friends, all these years I helped them, I gave them loans. I helped them establish businesses. I even bought some of them homes. He called them one by one, brothers and sisters. Not a single one gave him a single dollar. He begged them. Some of them were well off. Ten years ago, remember when you came, I was generous to you. Give me a loan. Give me a $10,000 loan so I can help myself and my family. Not a single person. He told me now, I learned who my true friends are. I realized who's a true friend. All those who are around me, I realized why they were around me. They were not true friends. Because I did, when I look back, I see they were not generous people. They simply wanted to benefit from me. I did not sense that true generosity from them, from their akhlaq, from their actions. And then the Imam السلام, says, the third one you should stay away, stay away from, Make sure you stay away and you do not befriend a fasiq, a sinful person. Because he will sell you for cheap. He will betray you so easily. Because if this person is not loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does not fear God and is constantly sinning, you think he'll be loyal to you? He doesn't have respect for his creator. You think he's going to have true respect for yourself? He'll sell you for cheap. Stay away from such people because then you'll be betrayed. You know, they say once there were two friends walking in the middle of the forest when suddenly they heard this frightening sound from behind. So they looked back and they saw this wild, big, black bear chasing them. So they started running, running to save their lives when suddenly one of the friends stopped, he took out his tennis shoes and he wanted to change his shoes and wear the tennis shoes. His friend looked at him, he told him, look, are you crazy? You think you can outrun the bear with the tennis shoes? 
He told him, no, Habibi, I will not outrun the bear. I'm trying to outrun you. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Friends sometimes will betray you. When you least expect it, wherein you're in trouble, they'll betray you. And one reason is because of their lack of faith. Al-Fasiq. They have no religion, no religious conviction. They sin, they have no respect for anything that is sacred. So the Imam tells us, stay away from these people. Now this, this is the fourth quality. The fifth quality, brothers and sisters, that we should consider when we're befriending friends, do not ever befriend a backbiter. One who backbites. One who comes to you exposing the lives of other people. Revealing the secrets of other people. Because be very sure that if your friend today is backbiting others, he's sharing and revealing their secrets, tomorrow it'll be your turn. Tomorrow he will backbite against you. And how many, how many examples do we have in society of such people? You go to these people, you tell them, look, this friend of yours is not a good friend. He says, no, but so far he hasn't harmed me, he's loyal to me. Tell him if he's not loyal with others, Tomorrow he could easily flip against you. He can change. So make sure you do not befriend one who does ghiba, who's constantly speaking about the faults of other people, exposing the secrets of other people because realize that you'll be next one day. And this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I befriend such a person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the circumstances in a way such that this same person will turn against me and ruin my life one day. So this is the first point. Let's now examine and move on to the second point. These are some qualities of good friends. Now what kind of qualities should I have brothers and sisters? As a friend, I also have an obligation. When we think of friends, we always think about their qualities. How about my own qualities? Because you know, finding a good friend is extremely difficult. Keeping a good friend is more difficult. You have to sustain this friendship. And you need the qualities that will help you sustain a good friendship. The first quality is the quality of humbleness. If you act arrogantly with your friend sooner than you think, you will lose that friend. Because if your friend realizes that you act as if you are better than your friend, you're higher than your friend. Your friend, your true good friend will not be comfortable with you. And this will create a distance between you and your friend. In one hadith, Imam Zain al-Abideen salam he tells Az-Zuhari, when Az-Zuhari complained to him, the Imam told him, oh Zuhari, whenever you find the shaitan whispering in your heart, telling you that you're better than your friends, this is how you resist the whispering of the shaitan. Oh Zuhari, you have three types of friends. The first type of friends are those who are older than you. When you see those friends who are older than you, tell yourself they are better than me because they have beat me to faith and iman. They're older than me. So they believed before me. So they did good before me. Hence, they're better than me. The second type of friends are those friends who are younger than you. If you have a younger friend, say to yourself, my younger friends are better than me because I beat them to sins and ma'asi. I'm older than them. So I committed the sins first. I made the mistakes before they did. Therefore, from this aspect, from this regard, they are better than me. And the third type of friends are those who are the same age with you. If you see your friends who are of the same age, this is what you tell yourself. I am certain about my mistakes. I have no doubts. There is no certain I committed those sins and committed those mistakes. But as for my friend, I'm not sure. I have doubts. Maybe my friend did not commit a mistake and I think he or she committed a mistake. Maybe my friend can justify what he did. Maybe it's a possibility. You can't place your hand on the Quran and say, Wallahi, he made a 
Mistake? No, maybe he did not make a mistake. So take your certainty, the certainty that you know you made a mistake, and forego the doubt about your friend. The Imam was teaching Az Zuhari how to feel humble. When you look at your friends, always view yourself in this way. With this humbleness, brothers and sisters, you can sustain a true friendship. A true, wonderful friendship in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two quality, when you make friends, do it for the sake of Allah. Be sincere. Don't do it because you want to somehow benefit from your friend. Whenever you think of making friends in society, always have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on mind. I'm not befriending this person because I want to be more powerful in society, because I want to position, because of my you know, reputation, because of this or that. No. Because your friend is smart. Sooner than later, he'll realize that you have befriended him, not for a genuine cause, not for a sincere cause, not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you will lose that friend. And this is very dangerous. The third quality that you have to observe, and with, with respect to your friendship, whenever you get into a dispute, because you know friends, Oftentimes, sometimes they get into fights. That's normal. Whenever you get into a dispute and your friend has become angry, wait until your friend cools down. Wait one day, two days, three days, wait a week. Because the Imam says when you go to your friend and he's still angry, your friend will shut you off. And this will create a distance between you two. If you get, ever get into an argument with a friend, give him time to cool off, to calm down. If he is truly a good friend, he'll come back to his senses and he'll make peace with you. Because there are some people I know, you know, they have gentle hearts. As soon as a problem happens with a friend, they immediately go, immediately. Their friend is angry, they go and they try to explain their position and try to justify it. Don't do it, that's not the right time. Give some time to your friend. Let them cool off, let them calm down. And then after that, go and explain your position and make peace with your friend. This is one advice from the Imam So this is the third quality that we should keep in mind. The fourth quality that you should observe when it comes to your friends, brothers and sisters, express your love for your friend. It is highly mustahab and recommended to go to your friend and tell your friend, I love you in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has promised when you do that, Allah solidifies that friendship. Now many people think, you know, I know whether I truly love my friend or not, obviously, because you know whom you love. How can I tell if my friend really loves me? Is there a way to detect if my friend truly loves me? You know what Imam al-Sadiq says? He gives us a beautiful sign, a, be a beautiful way in which we can detect whether our friends love us the way we love them. The Imam salam says, inspect your heart. Inspect your own heart. If you find in your heart that you truly love this person, that means that this person also loves you back. Because Allah has created the hearts alive. This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has created the hearts alike. So if you want to know whether someone likes you, loves you really, genuinely, sincerely, see if you love that person sincerely. And hence the hadith tell us, if you want to know whether you truly love Allah and Ahlul Bayt, this is what the hadith says, you apply the same principle the same formula. Oftentimes we wonder to ourselves, you know, how much does God really love me? I wish I know. There is a way for you to know how much Allah loves you. Inspect your heart. See how much you love Allah and Ahlul Bayt. How much you respect Allah and Ahlul Bayt. How worthy and valuable is Allah and Ahlul Bayt in your life. And you'll see how much Allah loves you and respects you and finds you worthy. It's a mutual relationship. Inspect your heart and you'll discover it. Now there's one important point here when it comes to loving our friends. One major you know, mistake that many people commit 
is that they love some of their friends exceedingly. You know, they exceed the limits and they begin to love them so much such that they share with them all of their secrets. Brothers and sisters, the Imam says, don't ever share all of your secrets, even with a close friend. This friend could be your BFF, your best friend forever, okay? That's fine. Don't share all of your secrets with him or her. You know why? Life tells us life is the best experience. Just ask the elders of the community and they can share with you many stories. One day this friend could turn against you. And he'll use you, these secrets against you and ruin you, your life and your reputation. The Imam salam says, when you want to share, share delicate secrets, sensitive secrets about your life, tell your friend your secrets, but with this in mind, that if one day my friend turns against me, could my friend use this secret against me? If he can, then don't say it. Keep it between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it that we have to share our secrets with everyone? Don't cheat all your secrets. One day this person will turn against you. And then what happens? You're in trouble. So love your friends if they are good friends. But be moderate. Be very careful. Don't let that love blind you such that you share every single detail of your life and every single secret of your life. Especially sensitive secrets that could harm you if they were revealed. That could ruin your life. Make sure and be careful of that. So this is one very important quality that we should consider. So these are some of the qualities that we have. Now let's get to the third point. How can I test my friend? I know what are the good qualities. I know what are the bad qualities. How do I test my friend? There are three ways in which we can test our friends. Number one. And this is a hadith from the Imam The Imam says, if you want to test your friend, do one thing. But be very careful in how you do it. Anger your friend. Yes, anger him. Tick him off. Get, him, get on his nerves. But of course, in an appropriate way. Don't do it in a negative way. And I don't want anyone tonight, after the majid is going and creating fitna in society, saying, oh, the Sayyid said, anger everyone around you and your friends and test them. No, be wise about it. Look, friendship is very important. You want to know who your friend is. The Imam says one way, test him. You know, make him angry. Tick him off. Upset him somehow. And see his reaction. Observe his reaction. How he reacts will tell you what kind of a friend he is. Whether this is a good friend or a bad friend. If this friend... You know, يَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْحَقِّ إِلَى الْبَاطِلِ As the Imam says, if his ghadab, if his anger causes him, you know, to lose his faith or to abandon the truth and embrace falsehood, to commit a mistake, that means this may be not such a good friend. Because friendship involves sometimes quarreling with another. He will anger you, you will anger him. This is part of life. The Imam says, if you anger your friend three times, and he does not say anything negative about you, you realize that he did not say anything negative, realize this is a good friend. So this is one way to test. The second way to test brothers and sisters travel. The Imam says travel with your friend and you'll realize whether this is a good friend or not. Because here in society, we don't show our true self. If you want to know if this person is selfish, is a good person, is a God-fearing person, is a generous person, travel with that friend. Call up your friend, tell him, you know, a potential friend, tell him, look, next week after Eid is over, let's go 10 days to Vancouver, holiday. And observe your friend because when you are traveling, you show your true self because you can't act while you're traveling. You're enjoying yourself, you're doing your activities, the plane is delayed, Something happens, your friend will show his true self. So when you travel, you discover whether this person has these qualities. So if you are interested in solidifying and forging a solid friendship with someone, travel with that person. And you'll discover whether this is a good friend or not. Number three, if you want to know if this is a good friend or not, whenever you get in trouble with your friend, a good friend is the one who's willing to take the blame. 
But if you find your friend always running away, not willing to take the blame, and the finger is always pointed at you, realize this is not a sincere friend. This is not a friend who truly, who truly cares about you, who wants the good for you. So these are three ways in which we can test our friends. Now for the last point, how and where can we find good friends, brothers and sisters? First of all, realize that finding good friends is not easy. Good friends are like treasure. You have to dig deep. You have to be patient. Sometimes it takes years to find a good friend. But you have to take the initiative. Some people, they just want a miracle to happen. A good friend will not just suddenly appear at your door and knock on your door. No. You have to search with, for those good friends. So it requires an active effort from you. Now one way to start finding a good friend, go to the respected members of your community and ask them to introduce you to good friends. Go to them, tell them, I want a friend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Introduce me to someone. The good and experienced and the elder members of the community, they have a sense of the people in the community. They can introduce you to friends. Another way for you to find a good friend, brothers and sisters, on social media. If you are interested in a friend, a potential friend, before actually becoming very good friends, go on the social media and monitor the activities of your friend. Look at their Facebook page. What kind of messages do they post? Look at their Twitter, their Snapchat, their Instagram. It gives you an idea of what kind of personality this person is. Look at their tweets. What are the things they discuss? Who are their friends? What kind of images do they favorite and like? This tells you a lot about this person. Go and do your research. It's possible. Another way for us to make friends, brothers and sisters, Throughout the year, 365 days throughout the year, you know, when it's not Ramadan or Muharram, where we have daily programs here, there are people in the community, brothers and sisters, invite them, get to know them personally. How many of you do that throughout the year? Make it a point where every Saturday, you invite someone from the community whom you haven't invited before. Sit with that person. See what this person has to say. And you'll sometimes find the good friend in such a way. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to know the great value and the significance of a mosque, the house of Allah, such as this place. I'm sure many of you has found the best friends in such a place. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always give you this blessing and realize how blessed you are to have such a place of worship. And the Prophet ﷺ in one hadith, he told his companions, when you see one of the gardens of the gardens of paradise, go play in it. They asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what gardens are you speaking about? The Prophet says, Majalis al Mu'mineen. The gatherings of the believers, these are the gardens of the gardens of paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts to good friends. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us maintain and sustain our friendships. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin.